here we are straight into draft for game four of the series. TL now at match point, moved back to the red side as Fnatic, well, they've decided to ban away the ASL. We'll hop into that picks and bans in just a moment, but uh, spoiler, He's going to keep yapping, but he won't keep ace one. <laughs> <laughs> and they also keep the Talia ban here, you know, kind of over the TF course. suggests Cassante, perhaps? Oh, oh. that is a Cassante, yep. <laughs> All right, Impact, how many Poppy games have you played? Because <laughs> <laughs> I really think this was such a good answer. Uh, maybe he learned enough from being on the receiving end of the matchup. Uh, Lucian plus Nami, but you don't have to do the Nami super early. Oh, actually, they're sifting through all of the ideas here. What are they going to opt for? Lucianami looked good for them. To be fair, so did Ash Forest. But Lucian appears to be the higher priority. What, I, what I'd really like Fnatic to think about is there's not been that much like early diving, right? No. I think Fnatic could afford to pick something a little more scaling. You know, something like a Zeri, Sivir, just something a little bit more that's on the late game Wait two a fighting side. Are you saying you want to see Lucianami versus Zeri Lulu again? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get <laughs> enough of that? <laughs> All I'll say is, for the sake of my region, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for the sake of the fans, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> Absolutely not. But uh, I think that they could afford to. They probably won't. It's probably Virus Ash. Yeah, okay, Here it's we go. Virus Ash. But uh, this time, Fnatic have the Cassante, and ultimately it's going to come down to whether TL do want to go with the Poppy. Do they want to play Poppy top? Is this something that Impact is comfortable on? Something that he, like, typically I would associate something like the Renekton. Maybe the Udir is an option for the top side, but uh, who knows what Impact has prepared for us. You it's not to too complicated of a champion, at least. It's true. Now, though, the bait on the final pick here. Uh -huh. Oh, you had a fun stat for me earlier one. on the Sejuani. Oak. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a fun stat. <laughs> that, is, that is not for air, that is for air. Uh, let's just say that Upji's early career may have negatively affected his Sejuani win rate slightly significantly. Okay, okay, yeah. Umpty's Sejuani win rate is 28.6%. and his second, What's his win rate in this series, his Kobe? His second most played of all time, but exactly. Yeah. The Sejuani has been good this series. Um, and uh, this is this is NA Sejuani now. Uh, you know, <laughs> ex Smithy leading the way, right? Hell yeah. <laughs> Smithy crawled, so Umpty could walk. Uh, Xin Zhao going to be banned away by Team Liquid. I think that makes a lot of sense. Razork has had a lot of agency and early game proactivity with that champion. He was out of sorts with the Wukong, especially based on what happened in the early game. Uh, I mean, huge amount of respect to APA. Say what you want about the player, that anyone that earns this amount of bans has to be doing something right. And they might be trying to pinch his paw, but he's still finding ways to have impact. I think his Ari performance was still solid earlier, even if they weren't able to convert it into a win. Yeah, I think I'm more scared about what it does to your team and how your team is going to have to play. Not having like the 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 longer range kind of scaling outs that Dracos was kind of alluding to having a lot of success in this series. They do bend away the Azir themselves though. Interesting. So feeling like that's the last real threat that can come through from Humanoid. Of course, for Humanoid, it is one of his most successful picks domestically. It is the champion that he can completely 1v9 games on. Uh, and, you know, these proactive playmakers for Humanoid in the mid game are always, you know, kind of played to his strong suits as an individual. But the Zac will be taken away. I think it's Renekton. Sejuani Renekton offers a solid front line. If you can get onto the Varus and Ash, then... Okay, maybe a very different direction. Might even be a lane swap angle. Of course, always dangerous to talk about hovers. But uh, a Scion would be a very solid front line. Taking the time, though. Want to be able to counter pick mid lane seems to be the option based on what we've seen thus far. In the end, Warren going to be the choice. So looking for the outscale angle. Oh, reliable. And look, the champion obviously provides a lot of gold value in the item upgrades, a lot of reliable long range engage, which can punish if Fnatic are too over eager. But they need some kind of late scaling option for APA. If they want to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the mid to late game. I'm worried about Fnatic's damage threat when it comes to dealing with these tanks. But uh, ooh, I don't know how I feel about Lee Sin here. Uh, Lee Sin Oriana is a very sketchy combo just because like they don't really complement each other very well. Normally you'd pair something like a, a Viego makes a little bit more sense because then you can set up for Viego to get the resets, especially in these early skirmishes. Also just Viego having a little bit 
well, I don't want to say more damage than Lee Sin in the early game, but uh, I think that ultimately they don't have to synergize with something like a Lee Sin LeBlanc or Lee Sin Ari would have a lot more agency with. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, dig deep, APA. What do we got here? They will be light on magic damage if they do this, but this is the next in his tier of champions. The Tristana was their go-to AD source. His Jace was a little bit shaky, so they never really liked that one. Um, but they do have, you know, a decent amount of scaling options. Obviously, they're going to have to worry about Frozen Heart becomes a very, uh, you know, powerful item to build against them. There is a Cassante on the other side that will be stacking armor against the double AD carries. It's, I will say, while I might be a little nuanced, you want to build armor boots here, but armor boots against Orn plus Sejuani is not True. ideal. You actually want yeah. Merc Treads. So there is that element to it, but you're definitely right that the bulk of TL's damage is primarily AD, and it'll be interesting how they navigate the Cassante problem. And as long as LDR is back in the shop after <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> and they get their armor penetration, yeah. And it should be a good time. Lord Dominic needs a day off. Uh, ah, yeah. He's living there. He's been selling yep. them this entire season. Needed yeah. a break. <laughs> yeah. Today, though, he's Boris was out yesterday. Yeah, you know, he was out. He wasn't, he wasn't available. Today, restocked. All right. Yeah. Of course, I think more pressure now goes onto the top side for impact because if he falls too far behind this Cassante, if Oscar gets ahead of the clock, is able to build a lot of those really powerful armor items, team fighting gets so much more difficult for the side of TL. I will also say, too, against Orn, like, Orn's got some good magic damage there. Um, to threaten at least early on as far as the, the rushing of those items. So let's see. It's Team Liquid locking in the double AD carries, the Lucian Nami again. Lucian Nami, that was such a horrific story for not just LCS, but also LEC. The West. But, and to be fair, yeah. I thought we were united in something yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. And Jan seems determined to change the narrative. <laughs> after, after all our teams have been playing against, you know, Jackie Love, uh, Lucian Nami, they've decided. They're going to go with it again. And unsurprisingly, as we enter a game where TL, they're on the cusp of victory, APA just continues to fire shot after <laughs> shot after shot. Right. Got G2, can't carry you forever. <laughs> Don't, lose Don't lose to NA, to NA boys. <laughs> <laughs> Some of APA's funniest lines are when he uses himself or NA as like the the insult. <laughs> He's like, what? You're gonna lose to APA? Bro. You're nope. gonna lose to a one trick? So far the answer is yes, and twice thus far. What are you feeling, Kobe? You think in game five or are you thinking I mean I you said really early on that you just wanted five games. Did I? Is so, that what I said? Yeah. I seem to remember so Drake to saying oh. that, and I was like, I don't want five games. I'm still recovering after uh, yesterday's yeah. five yeah, games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if there's five games tomorrow with PSG and G2, yeah. I'm going to die. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you will have given your life to a worthy cause. <laughs> well, rest in peace, Fedius. Uh, yeah. It was a pleasure knowing you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's see how things play out. The lane swap is coming through from Team Liquid. How would um, you like to be buried? <laughs> uh, I would like to uh, <laughs> You're not confident on Team Liquid's I, I, lane swap? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're trying to get a two-for-one special, which whenever team loses the series, you <laughs> really got to know. Okay. okay, let's keep track of what Impact is up to. Is he? Who's attacking level one first? Humanoid, you better not lose okay. your flash this so, time around. <laughs> I appreciate the Impact cam, but now I can't see what yeah. anyone else is doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mini, mini map is like the most critical part for, uh, <laughs> for lane swap. We're just watching him run around right yeah. now. Chickens! He's found the chickens! <laughs> This is like us with the pandas. Oh, no, we did not do that at the pandas. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is not allowed. All right. I You're going to get us taken to jail or something. No, <laughs> no, I said nothing. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Fnatic trying to pressure on the bottom okay, side. Okay, so we've seen this um, from PSG in the planes. They were kind of the ones that popularized this initially in MSI, where you basically bring your top laner to the bot and you start fast pushing, basically to be able to soak up some farm and also to be able to hit onto the tower because the bot tower does die quicker than the top one does. So you can just funnel more plates and Oscar being hit, he's looking to get some information as well. That early ward, maybe they can even steal this blue buff away. Razork now coming in. I think it's crucial that he is here. If you let Umpty and Impact walk down to that bot lane tower, could be disastrous, but APA really taking a lot of damage. Tristana jump forward, Rocket jump there. Razork forced to flash back. Now wants to go back in with the Spectral Ma. Stepping backwards is the level one Orn. Impact forced to flash away. Phase rush proc, but Fnatic happy to just trade flash for flash. Umpty steals away the blue buff here, which is kind of critical because we didn't get to see it because of the minimap, but Razork, uh, starting on that blue quadrant of Fnatic's side, was able to take that whole side 
side away of the jungle from the lane swap power of Team Liquid. And so it's going to end up where Razark has way more camps to go to here. He steals away the Gromp, and he's still going to have his, his red quadrant to go back to afterwards. What's really interesting about this swap is they actually sent Jun into the jungle after getting level 2, and Oscar, along with Noah, with a duo attacking the plates, meaning that they only shared the resources between those two as APA looks for a fight. APA, a bit of damage, gets the reset on this after charge. Can Rock jump out? Or continue to extend the trade in his favor. Three plates taken down on the bottom side for Fnatic. And Umpty now is in a really tough spot because of the, the jungle takeaway there on lane swap when they started their own red quadrant. Meanwhile, Razork is finishing up his red and, and Umpty's venturing in to try and find him at those Krugs. They are going for the call there though. Uh, Fnatic now swapping their duo right back to the top side. You'll notice Impact trying to push in this wave as quickly as he can because he knows that the swap is happening. He has information on the bot side of the map that uh, Oscar Rinnan is choosing to stay, meaning that he's trying to get as much farm as he can, knowing that a stacked wave is likely to come, and he doesn't want to run the risk of getting dived. Humpty now is going back into the side where, where Jun already is, where Fnatic re-swapped to. So Humpty here has just lost so much time going to the other side of the map and going to have to uh, just start his re-clear now from top to bottom. And the Fnatic just want to try to zone off, just hold this wave, stack waves. They're going to take so much experience away from impact and the tower or the waves will hit after the tower armor has fallen away on the top side of the map. So it'll take a lot more plates, especially as impact is just being forced away. He needs to be really careful because the dive that we were talking about earlier is still a very real possibility. Only level two, you can see Noah level four, Razork nearly level five. He has the top crab that he's going to be able to secure as well. Oscar making his way back out onto the map. He has his TP still available too. The pings are coming down onto top. Let's see if Impact can survive. Yeah, let's see about this jungle lead. Um, I'm just coming back for the cover. Impact just running. He knows he has to give this one up. But already Spectral Mach connecting. Impact has to walk back under the tower. A lot of early damage. Noah taking tower aggro though. It's a bit of a disaster. And here comes Umpty to punish. One more tower shot. Noah running for his life. Umpty's attention a little bit split, but Impact is still standing. Rock in North America. Rock here for TL. Impact refuses to go down the redive. The Q will not connect. Piercing arrow not enough. Fnatic desperate to get something. TL taking their time, standing strong. Soaking at the turret, they're still waiting around here. Meanwhile, we get the pop-up on bottom side. They're just gonna attack Noah. They're going on to Noah, who's isolated right now. They're able to catch the wave, which means that the dive is not a possibility anymore. Fnatic completely fumbled at the arrival of Umpty, bought so much space. I don't know how Noah got tower aggro, but that's what caused the dive to just fall apart for Fnatic. You, for additional movement speed, trying to zone away Oscar, only level three. TL denying as much XP as humanly possible oh, here. TP now coming in. This time around, will they be able to get it right? Impact can go unstoppable. Dashes to the tower, but won't catch anyone with the stun. Razor standing on the edge. This time they've cleaned it up for the side of Fnatic. Q forward will connect Noah with first blood. Meanwhile, on the bottom side, they tried to chunk out Oscar as well, but Oscar still uh, surviving down here. Numerados. Footwork shield, not enough. TL grabbing a kill as well, matching it up. Oscar does have the TP, so he should be able to just return to this lane, but props to Jan and Core JJ making that work. Without their jungler in the vicinity, that dive should have been way harder, but they're able to find the outplay onto Core. The gold largely even as Fnatic finds advantages in top. Jan responds in the bot. Yeah, huge, huge stuff there, Fnatic. They use their bit of a lead in jungle, and Razor going over, they, they go for dive number two on the top side, and as he said, Impact uses teleport before, so he has nothing to get back the lane. So then the uh, the experience difference here for Oscar is going to remain a nice lead for him. The initial survival, obviously solid. TPing back the redive from Fnatic, much cleaner the second time around. Razwork again, the one we have to keep our eyes on. Almost level six. Umpty trailing just a little bit behind. Total go though, still favoring Noah. It is the on-hit Varus, not the lethality Varus. Wants to be able to shred through the tanky front line that Team Liquid have brought. Uh, and champ select. Yeah, for sure. They definitely need that to be able to get through that front line. I agree. They think they're going for team fights for later. Meanwhile, a dragon should be collected, no problem. APA flash forward, bomb ticking, not quite enough. Nice play from APA, gets a flash out from Humanoid, no TP available for him. He's demonstrating a level of aggression that we need to see from him. He's feeling more and more confident as this series has gone on, and why wouldn't you? After a fantastic Aurelian Soul performance in game three, Humanoid going to go back to base. Decided to go for the Ionian boots. Makes a lot of sense. Not a huge amount of armor on the side of Fnatic just yet. 
We'll see if it manifests on the top side of the map or if Oscar Redden has to itemize for something against the Orm, but of course not playing against him, so can just focus on armor. Dragon will be barely picked up there, but Fnatic now continuing their assault on the top side. They did pick up three grubs courtesy of Razork earlier on, so we'll start to tear through those tower plates. In fact, still only level four. Azric level 6 probably can't kill him in isolation quite yet, but with Jun on the way, he might be in trouble. Nice buffer out on the Searing Charge does mean Impact holds on to his life for now. Impact is not having a fun time. Core, though, here to assist. Razork needs to be careful about overcommitting. G on the way in. Out of the Shroud, Razork going to be a little bit slower, but no and Jun just continue to take plates. Meanwhile, on the bottom side, Raz uh, Oscar had actually roamed up towards mid lane. And it's just Yawn down there, the Lucian trying to zone him away from the experience as this tower will fall on next wave. <laughs> it's going to take one more wave, but they haven't gotten any extra XP for impact a tiny bit there on that last crash. So a lot of resources burned from TL for very little effect. Yeah, meanwhile, you can't solo dive Oscar down there. The, no. the Cassante is fine slipping under tower, so Oscar is going to have and even build on the experience lead that he already had. So the Cassante here does get to the level six. I mean, overall, this early game is going great for Fnatic. You look across the board, Oscar Renan has a full level now over Impact, who's trying to set up a freeze on the top side of the map. Razork has nearly a full level over Umti, along with a healthy CS lead. In the mid lane, Humanoid is pretty much a, a whole wave up somehow, even with the level of aggression that we're seeing from APA. And Noah's about to crest over to seven, with Yon keeping pace with him for now after securing the Static Shiv. Yeah, full reset here for Fnatic. Means the TL need to be very careful with their invade that they're doing right now. Because impact, impact cannot join. Oh, impact Jun. is slow right. pushing. APA going in. Good chain CC. Just trying to burn through the Ash Torch. Takes over to six. Jun just barely able to escape. Culling. Offering a little bit of damage there, but not a whole heck of a lot else. Noah now running as well. Getting the flash out. Thus far, favoring TL. They get a lot of initial cooldowns. And they're doing this on the timing with that, that wave that we saw. Impact slow building on top side. Since it was going to push out. Just last hitting, slow building that big wave. Now he's trying to crash it quickly, but Oscar will get there in time. So Fnatic lose some summoner spells there on a uh, intelligent move from Team Liquid to actually force even in a scenario uh, where they are 4v5. I mean, they got three flashes, Kobe. I think TL played that very well. Jun, I thought that he had an awareness of it, but caught completely unawares. Surprised that he was able to live off the back of that play. Team Liquid, even though they find themselves at a bit of a deficit, still in a commanding position and feel confident. Now that they've moved their bot lane into mid, we're seeing the strength of Lucian. And Tristana in a side lane should feel very safe, and also that tower threat is very real. Definitely looking at that cooldown on Umpty's ultimate. When that Sejuani ultimate is back and available, the Fnatic bottom lane are sitting ducks. Varus and Ash without flashes have got to be the angle that they go for. But meanwhile, Oscar with his level lead. Continuing, just get aggressive here. Pullback is good, TP coming in, but they might find a dead impact by the time they arrive. Quick finish coming in from Razor. he resets. Now he's the Orn. APA's got nowhere to go. This is not your side of the map, buddy. Double kill coming through for Razor. That top lane level lead, Oscar with the Cassante just forces it on impact. And even with Team Liquid making the call to try and send extra resources up there to answer, Fnatic get the first kill. They get the extra flash out of impact as well. Pretty big stuff for them. It does cost them a little bit of mid wave priority there. So Lucian gets you know, a turret plate or possibly two but it's still going to be such a massive, massive play there for it, for Fnatic. 12 minutes in, and it's just 2,500 gold lead as Razork looks to secure fourth grub. Might have to pay his life for it. Yon chasing forward with the calling. Razork nowhere to go. Shut down. I'm about to praise Fnatic, but TL with an excellent punish. Yon really the saving grace for Team Liquid right now. His Lucian is doing, uh, it's doing work. He's keeping even with Noah, even with all the action happening on the map. The question is, is it enough, Yon? He's going to be able to get away to safety. No shockwave available for humanoids. But things are starting to crumble very quickly for Team Liquid. The top has fallen apart. The bot lane tower lost as well. The fact that they get two grubs is something. But let's see if Umpty can make a play happen. Oscar. Oscar caught out here for a brief moment. Unstoppable. Just going to keep trying to dash out to safety. Initial stun now coming through from the permafrost. But damage quite not quite there for TL. And it's an important thing to note about these double AD carry compositions is that if they don't get ahead of the clock by taking more plates, by pressuring more in the early game, they don't really do a lot around this one and a half to one item mark compared to champions like the Orianna, the Viego, these champions that spike or can spike pretty hard early on. I mean, these fights are largely going to come down to that whole 
why. I say Team Liquid's composition is very straightforward, front to back, right? You want to set up on those objectives, and you either want to use your front line to force your way into an objective, or once you've started the objective, use it that the moment the enemy comes in close, you turn and engage. Great. I mean, this isn't a perfect example, but you overstep, and that Sejuani ultimate is so effective at kind of isolating you and, and, and gunning you down. So nice stuff there from Team Liquid. The Dragon started off. Good steal, though. Razork. Damn. Stole a Grub, got them to four Grubs, has now stolen a Drake. He has taken over here. Yep, remains calm. Uh, after the last death uh, on top side, hits the smite, gets the objective here for them. And Team Liquid, not a lot you can do after that either. Side waves, kind of a dangerous place, so just going to go for the reset there. Somebody has to go catch top side now. Reset impact up there as APA pushes out bottom. Now I think Team Liquid need time. You know, one and a half items on Yon. Would love for him to get to that rapid fire cannon. Is still confident enough to step up in mid lane, but Razork is getting more and more powerful. I don't think they have the tools to contest this Herald on the side of TL. Yeah, this is the stage of the game where you really have to be aware of Ash Arrow angles. Trying to keep track of Jun here is kind of important for Team Liquid. I would also say this is when uh Diego is at one of his strongest points. That initial item gives you just so much dueling power. The moment that you get one reset, he can be an absolute menace. I think so Umpti, Umpti's been spotted here going for this play on a Humanoid. Humanoid getting a bit of poke down. We'll take the passive away, making the dive that much harder if they do want to try to go for it. Gets the pullback on the Arctic Assault. Good Shockwave. Forces the ult for ult trade. APA. A little bit TP, more TP. Step up, but Oscar Renan wants to keep this play going. Knows that Umpti. No real resources left. APA going back in onto Humanoid. Wants to try to make the confident play. Flashing forward. Humanoid doesn't have a lot of mana. Arctic Assault. The reset of the jump is clean from APA, but they can't quite finish the kill. Nice sidestep from Humanoid, but now Core stepping in. Oscar TPs in and gets nothing. APA leapfrog there as he's able to use the flash to get to the other side, and they still come out with the kill despite the teleport there coming to support Humanoid. Absolutely love the confidence from APA, recognizing how dangerous this situation is, knowing that he could get pulled through the wall from Oscar Rinnin. He makes the choice to dive onto Humanoid's face, get the reset onto his W, dive back out, and outplay the whole situation. Incredible stuff from him. Playing with confidence, so critical. And see in the bottom side where the Ash Arrow was used towards Jan, but no hit there. APA. Very confident, two lead. Two level lead on the Kazante. Let's just continue to walk up. One and a half items now, Kraken Slayer completed. We take a look. MasterCard, lean economy, snapshot. Slightly favored in eight, both AD positions for the side of TL. What a successful Aurelian soul the, a game does to someone. Now, APA playing with confidence. Impact though is going to have to flash that. Now, ulti's down. TL, can they get anything in the extended play? Razork still has to be respected here. Diego pretty powerful. All right, so this should just be topside overloaded for Fnatic. APA on the Tristana will get the tower. Uh, and Fnatic trying to take over Vision through jungle. No flash impact. on impact. Razzle can't afford to overextend with Yon and Umti here in the area. Charge out. They're so uncertain. TL don't want to risk stepping up. Remember, Impact is really starved, though. He was the way more starved top laner, a full level down. This Orn keeps getting chunked out early. So as they try and get up here to answer the Rift Herald push, they have to be a little bit careful, and Umpty is there to escort him and allow them to actually finish off that Rift Herald, take it before the tower goes down. Sunfire finally completed. Impact is going to help him a lot. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Team Liquid, even though they're a 1,000 gold down, not the end of the world for them. You can see Yon with two items fully completed. is feeling pretty confident with the control of a mid. That tower is going to be chipped away at if uh, Noah... He's in some serious danger here. Yeah, he knows how dangerous this is, so instead he's going to concede the tower. So that's another unlock for Team Liquid. Momentum slowly shifting back into their favor. Razzle was dictating a lot of the early game, but he's not quite having the same impact as we enter the mid game. I mean, five minutes ago, it was almost a 3k gold lead for Fnatic. Now it's it's less than one. TL have done a fantastic job punishing some of these over-aggressive moves, and now APA does get the input buffer off. Clean nice. on the Tristana. Nice interrupt from Umpty to stop the chase coming in from Humanoid. APA, shockwave there, but he already gets the knockback. TP now burned. Both sides happy to back off. TL have to commit the TP to make it happen, though. A little trigger happy, I feel, from Team Liquid. You really can't afford to have Impact losing out on these waves in the side. He does TP, paranoid about the fact that Fnatic is forcing another fight, and Fnatic will be happy with that exchange. Yeah, that was all props to Humanoid. As he got knocked back, he hit the shockwave onto APA. 
And Impact comes in to make sure the, the long chase is not there. But that's going to be a critical cooldown missing here for the macro for TL. I mean, yeah. Great that you highlighted it, Kobe, because Dragon, 17 seconds. We take stock of some of the ultimates that have been used. That's uh, APA's ulti gone, Umpty's ult gone, Humanoid's ult gone, but Impact still has his, and that could be massive in the upcoming game. Yeah, fight. I guess the difference is Impact's going to have to walk his way down, so he didn't get local gold on that outer tower that just went down, but he will walk his way in time. Humanoid Shockwave still on cooldown, 10 seconds till it's back up. APA is on the wave on bottom side. He'll got to back off. Don still playing very far forward. Razor trying to find the stun. Good calling in the Forge God getting called. 2-2, two, two, baby. Knock up onto three. Reset coming in, though. Razor now taking the body. Will dash out to safety. Arctic Assault over the wall. Fnatic get one. Are they happy with just that, or do they want to push for more? A massive bubble from Core JJ almost swings the fight in favor of Team Liquid, but Razork is just barely able to get the kill onto Umpty and steal away his soul. The Dragon's still up, but TL with control over the mid-wave, with the arrival of APA, are feeling confident and don't want to give this objective up for free. Yeah, that was a good job by Fnatic, pulling the trigger there when they saw that the Tristana was on the wave on bottom side, forcing it, getting the kill, Razor getting the soul, and flashing back out, but now we arrive for the dragon ADA fight. APA zoning away the jungler, gets the reset on the jump. The confidence of this man at match point versus Fnatic on this Tristana is incredible. He just Goomba stomped Razork right on top of his head. Jungler down, objective claim. Really nice play from APA. Even though Team Liquid lost the initial fight, they still had very healthy, well, champions ready to contest and they're able to get a good punish. Keep your eyes on Core here. He's gonna land a fantastic bubble onto Razor just as he's trying to get this initiation through. Ultimate into knockup. This is where Razor gets dangerously low, but he's able to get the execution off thanks to his auto attack. Gets the soul steal, and then is able to dash away to safety. Fnatic, with five members alive, you think could secure the objective, but it's not quite enough as APA finds an impressive pick, taking yeah. tail to two dragons up. You see immediately afterwards, that lack of flash costing Razork his life as APA found him in the river and got the objective afterwards. Look at how strong this Tristana is now. 30 CS up over Humanoid, a full level working towards this second item. Even though they are largely full AD, it feels like that's not going to slow them down. Alti forcing out the early flash. Good look from Umpty. Getting the Orianna flash in the fights to come is going to be big. And APA has been one of the most controversial figures in International League of Legends <laughs> after Last of Worlds. You know, this guy gets criticized so much and still embraces the trash talk, embraces the entertainment factor. But here on the international stage at MSI versus EU, when all of the pressure is on, he is performing. Dash forward, Lucian pulling. Damn! And the damage really is nice so play. hard for them to respond to. And Kobe, I have to agree, this man is trash talking before he even knows he's playing against Europe. The full confidence, the full commitment, despite leaving himself vulnerable. Look Paris. at the momentum shift though. Like a single dragon is all it's taken. Fnatic's gold lead has dissipated. Team Liquid are playing with nothing but confidence. They're playing on two lanes and they're forcing Fnatic on the defense. All right. We get another timer window between arrows as well. It's a very short cooldown, but it is there. And so Team Liquid trying to take advantage of that little timing window to keep their vision up inside Fnatic's red quadrant of their jungle. On, has the cleanse, quick thumbs up. Fnatic getting pushed back again. They've got good tools if we get later into the game, but they're against the double AD carry comp. It might just be so tough, especially because you have double items on APA and Yawn already. So the, the thing that we haven't talked about, we mentioned earlier, Oscar. Cassante can still Cassante. Against a double AD carry could be problematic as he continues to mount armor. Oscar, though, speak of the devil. Good bit of poke, APA. Ball chunk there, once again, just going in under Razor, knowing that he's stronger in the 1v1. Damage onto Umpty is big, though. The fight already kicking off, and Umpty just about deleted impact off to the side. Call the Forge God up and available. Second rank in the ultimate, and Yawn just continues with the calling. Massive damage down on the Humanoid. Impact now flashing into the back line, trying to create a bit of chaos. Razor can't find the reset. The VA goes down. Oh, impact barely lives. Oscar's going for it. Dash out. Oscar keeps walking up. I don't know if they're going to get another chance to find a fight like this. Dash in from Yawn. Confidence into the face of Noah. One more Q. Double auto. Wants to dash in. APA keeps going. Leaping face first into Cassante. It's completely psycho. And Oscar is quick to punish. TL turn it back though. The bubble comes through. And Yawn is a monster in the fight. Yawn on Lucian performing 
here. It is Team Liquid's Academy promoted carries. People criticize both of them on the international stage, but APA and Yon are playing with confidence. They went all in on this river fight. Let's take another look, Betty. Crazy close. You can see APA turns his attention up towards Razorg. It's Umpty that's getting melted on the front line. He's able to just barely get away with a good flash. Fnatic is indecisive about how they want to engage. Jun oversteps and the culling was massive. Melting through Humanoid and Jun, a good knockup. Impact, oh, nice flash from Core JJ. He doesn't give the reset over to Razorg. That could have been everything. The heal, heal comes in for Impact. So close from Fnatic. The health bars were blinking. But when you needed to make the play, it was APA without hesitation. Flashes in, gets the kill onto Jun. Yon on the backside looks for Noah. And it is a one team fight for Team Liquid. Team Liquid put faith in their academy system. They built these players up along with Spawn, who's the head coach now. And APA flashing in there, getting that explosion, getting the reset. Yawn on the Lucian Nami, one of the characters that gets criticized the most. And Team Liquid are here with a very slight lead. We're getting very excited after these team fights, but Fnatic still looking for a turn. Arrow, quick sidestep, relentless pursuit out from Yawn. Umti and Core retreating. Meanwhile, on the top side, APA pushing in, impact off in the bottom lane, ready to come up and support. Yep, that's the key. The 1-3-1 one, one here for Team Liquid. Fnatic grouping up mid. They were really banking on that Ash Arrow to try and find a pick onto Team Liquid. Remember it was last year that Fnatic were in dire straits, two of the worst regular seasons we'd seen. They brought it back at Worlds. They brought it back this year to bring them to MSI. But now on the cusp of elimination at the hands of North America, the hands of Team Liquid, the pressure has never been higher. Every Ash Arrow cooldown, you gotta look for it. For oh, Fnatic. No calling, no one's ulti, doesn't connect! Yon is just better! Yon eviscerates Noah. He's gonna secure a tower off the back of that as well. We've talked about confidence, and Yon is playing with nothing but it. Another Impact. pick. Call calling out, getting the ulti over the wall. Humanoid hurt, bleeding, but will limp away. Have to respect the resource from Razorg, though. Have to be careful trying to take down Yon. If they can kill Yon, he gets the reset. And now it's Razorg's turn to take over. The Lucian dashing in, but the interrupt is there, and they get him! Team Liquid in the team fight are so damn clean! APA is Goomba stomping! He is all chatting! He is winning it for North America! Core JJ hits the bubble! He puts a stop to those resets, and Team Liquid are gonna go for the Baron! A massive team fight once again for Team Liquid. Incremental small leads, but they have amounted to a massive advantage. They have picked a Bart Fnatic, and this may have been the fight to secure them the series. Impact, the veteran, in the jungle. He forces Humanoid's flash, and then Yon goes for the kill on the Humanoid and trades one for one. A dangerous gamble from Yon because, as you mentioned, he gets the reset, which means that Razork takes over his body. He thinks he's going to run away with the fight. A huge ulti from Umpty combined into the bubble, shuts that reset down, and then they just don't have the damage left. The arrival of APA to clean up the fight. Team Liquid have been decimating Fnatic time and time again in these fights. Now with the Baron buff, they have a 5k gold lead and they're on the precipice of knocking Fnatic out of MSI. John, 5.3k damage. Game one, game three, discipline for TL won them the day. It is their bloodlust in game four that allows them to take over these fights, punishing Fnatic at every turn. Okay, EU faithful Fnatic fans, You've got to be looking for these Ash Arrows again, but it's on impact anyway. He slides out. He has multiple outs for Ash Arrows with his W as well. He's going to be able to back up in TL. They're going to destroy your base for There's it. Three members committed topside for tier two in the potential pick. The Baron has not been slowed. An inhibitor will be knocked down. They can shift their sights now to do the bottom side of the map to the bottom inhibitor. Fnatic ready to mount what could be their final defense. Exactly, Dracos. The siege is absolutely crazy from Team Liquid. Double AD carry just melts through these towers. They're continuing to siege. Impact isn't there. Fnatic, though, they don't have the easiest engage tools. The damage is massive from Team Liquid. Lineup now retreating. Now they temper their aggression. Now they wait. They know they've got the lead. They are in control. Fnatic, the ones who have to throw the crazy punches, the ones who have to take the risks. 
Ones who have to risk it all in the fights to come. APA continues to push mid lane lock up there. Razork buffer out to safety, but he's already getting chunked down. Call of the Forge God is here. Razork knocked up. Impact not sure if he can quite finish the kill. APA leaves it, takes down one, gets right back out. Oscar trying to make the difference, but he's already down. TL looking to go for the throat, looking to end it here. It's just Noah and Jun. Razork now coming in. The reset's there. He can see it in his eye. His time to shine. But if he fails, it will cost him everything. Team Link, but they're getting poked out, but the, the APA is taking down the Nexus Surge. Fnatic against the wall, and here comes TL. PBE, they don't have enough. APA is hitting the Nexus. Team Liquid are taking everything. Team Liquid will knock out Fnatic. Wins for them for North America as the LEC falter. Damn the doubters, ignore the haters. Team Liquid are here to defend North America's honor. In game three, the early game was not looking great. Sorry, game four. But slowly, incrementally, patiently, they reasserted themselves back into this game and they absolutely dominated in the team fights. An incredible turnaround for Team Liquid. Not only will North America not go winless, sorry, is it like they will avoid the lossless streak. They will win a massive series over Europe and they will keep their hopes alive here at MSI. I believe Fnatic have never lost a best of five to NA until today. It's true. Five and zero they had been, but TL are gonna hand them the L. It's an incredible moment to be sure. Of course, we're going to hand things over to the analyst desk, but stick around for the Verizon post-game interview with APA and Core JJ in a few minutes. We're going to hear from Humanoid shortly after. Amazing series on the side of Team Liquid. And Castos are right. It is the first time North America wins the best of five series against Fnatic. And Which is it was crazy, because that's crazy yeah. to do it. They have I'm only actually this, played so. one best of five series before. The yeah. other series were best of three. So it is the sixth Fair. time of asking in a best of series. But still, it's like 14 yeah. years. It's amazing. For uh. all the fans who stayed up late in the night, to support their team, they shall be rewarded. Amazing series on this side of Team Liquid, ramping up game after game, solidifying this best of five here. Yeah, I'm sorry, Team Liquid, I wasn't familiar with your game. Yeah. What a performance by them, especially the man in the mid lane, Yappa himself, absolutely yeah. outshining Humanoid in every single, well, yeah. at least four of the games. <laughs> there was one game where Humanoid was ahead, but uh, you just have to give the guy so much credit, because coming into the year, people were asking for his head on a, on a spike. Mm -hmm. They were saying, why Even on earth are we keeping split. this yeah. guy around? Even, Even during, during the split. split, as you say, before we got into playoffs. But what an evolution for the player, and what an evolution for Team Liquid. Yeah, as we see down here this APA play, starting the APA highlight reel early, uh, I think the big thing with APA, especially in playoffs, Jet, I know you remember this, where people were absolutely ripping him apart. They're like, you're playing so bad. Why are you talking so much trash? How dare you? Who are you? And I think the thing that people really underestimate and the thing I absolutely want to hammer home about APA as a player and a person is he is such a grinder. Mm -hmm. Like this person, no one thought he'd ever be LCS level. No one thought he'd ever be able to compete internationally. He grinds so much solo queue. He's done so much to open up his champion pool in the face of allegations that he can't play enough champions. He can't play anything besides Aurelian, Soul, and Ziggs. And I'm just so happy to see how well he performed today. Of course, uh, heartbreaking for Fnatic here. But as you said, uh, you, you can only respect APA here because we saw some fun reactions about Those the two. venture and everything. Uh, disrespectful, maybe coming too aggressive. He was just confident all along. And this is what brings you these necessary wins. Yeah, and I'd say APA and Yawn, the damage dealers, the 280 carries in this game, two of the biggest grinders you're going to see in the entire region showing up pretty much this entire game. This fight in particular was just kind of indicative uh, of that aggression. Like APA flashing into the bush <laughs> where there are four people potentially. Yawn on the backside executing the other AD carry as well. Yes, he dies, but who cares? Because 
because he won the series. And I think that was the mindset of both Yon and APA this entire game was just so much confidence and aggression. And wow. you can see they carried this game that they needed to carry. I yeah. think if APA is your playmaker, Yon is Mr. Consistent. He was yeah. always out damaging Noah. I think that was the largest discrepancy in terms of 1v1 matchups across the entire course of the series. And it's so great to see these two players coming up through the academy roster being picked, basically handpicked by Spawn. Mm -hmm. And the, him saying, I'm going to put my time, my investment into you and seeing them grow over the years. Yeah, and I think Jan is absolutely vindicated in the Lucian Nami argument yeah. he's having <laughs> with the NA fans this year, right? Like, I thought they used that pick super, super well, especially in this final game. Uh, I honestly love the, the way Team Liquid kept on progressing game after game after game because we saw that w the first game was one-sided, the second game was one-sided as well. But when we've been talking about Team Liquid being able to snowball the lead they have, here they've been able to come back. And I, I'd say the series that we saw from them against TES, they looked really nervy to me. Mm -hmm. And I know that's an excuse you can use when the other team is better, but they just were so indecisive in small things that you wouldn't expect them to be indecisive in. This series was very much more the confidence they played with. And it will make me really interested for the rest of the tournament, because if we if we just looked at like, oh yeah, by the way, Fnatic played their best of five kind of close. Team Liquid really got slammed, even though they were both 3-0. You're thinking Fnatic's going to win the series, yes. but a team is way more than the one series they played before the next series. So it's going to make the rest of this tournament really interesting. Yeah, and I think they definitely went through the keys to victory that we kind of <laughs> identified, right? Like, we want them to have 5v5 team fighting prowess and comfort. We want to get Umpty involved with his lanes early, and they want to play the map well. And now they will be going on to face the loser of BLG T1. It doesn't get easier, let's say that. No. Yeah, there are no easy paths at MSI usually. Uh, we'll see how well they can do against BLG T1, but I think today has given me a lot of hope in the TL lineup, especially if they can manage to get an early game lead against either of those two teams. I think they have the macro sense to shut out uh, the, the, their enemies. Mm -hmm. I do think it's likely going to be a very difficult task for TL, but I think they have a shot. But we saw the improvements that we wanted to see from them, so it's going to come down to the homework that they're going to do ahead of this series. I'm, I'm happy to see them perform, honestly, and I'm happy to see I them implementing team. what we wanted to see from them. And also, as you guys said, the carry is stepping up, especially after a difficult time in the previous series. Yeah, yeah. APA, uh, he's my player of the series for sure. <laughs> Definitely. And I think, I think I do want to see Job done. Like for what? What? Job done. You beat Fnatic. You beat EU. Uh, <laughs> anything no. you do from this point forward we'll is it. just gravy. Like uh, I'll take icing it. Icing on the cake. Yeah, icing on the cake. I mean, we talked about this at the beginning of the series, right? This one, this one is for Venter. This one is for memes. This one is for bragging for the next six years, for the next time we're gonna face <laughs> off against in the international stage. And honestly, I mean, they they had Fnatic's phone number the whole series, and they showed it with confidence and with aggressive plays over and over again. Yeah, for APA as well, to beat the, what is, who's widely considered the second best mid laner in Europe at times, comparing like on, on a level with Caps in terms of quality, is a very impressive thing to do, especially after disappointing Worlds last year. You have to give this guy his flowers, and although, as Jat says, it's kind of job done, we're, we're satisfied with this conclusion, <laughs> I think there is hope for this TLR lineup in the rest of MSI, although it's going to be a difficult road, but definitely coming into Worlds, I expect to see them challenging to maybe get to a quarterfinal. Well, and I think it goes back to what we heard from Spawn when we were looking at his initial like quote about this team, right? About what they wanted to do going into this game, open up mid for APA, and then play a lot more confidently. And I think we absolutely saw that. The hallmark of APA's performance, obviously, I think his laning still needs work. I also think Umti and him worked really, really well yep. together in this series early to make sure his lane was absolutely fine. But his team fighting and his willingness to play so aggressively in fights, it serves him so well and I think is a crucial part of the way that TL fight overall. What do we want to see next from Team Liquid? Again, as we said, it's going to be a difficult task for them, whatever is the uh, opponent that they're going to have, but what is these specificities that we want to see them bring into the next series? I think I'd like to see Umti unleashed a little bit more on the map in the early game. He mm -hmm. did do a good job in this series of shutting down Humanoid in the mid lane, as you say, working well with APA. Mm -hmm. I think when Team Liquid are at their strongest is when Umti is actually able to get into the enemy jungle and start tracking the enemy jungle and making sure they can shut them down. So I'd like to see that. It's going to be really difficult because you're against either BLG or T1, who are teams mm -hmm. that very 
very good at defending their junglers. For yeah. now, time to celebrate. Time to enjoy the wins and shocks. Is standing by with APA and Core JJ for the Verizon post-game interview. I'm here with Core JJ and APA after um, their fantastic victory over Fnatic in the Verizon post-game interview. My God. What a victory. It was incredible to watch APA. I'll start with you. I mean, you had a, an unbelievable series. And I want to know how it was in terms of your performance backed up by the mental warfare. Um, well, I think we had a, a lot of good prep against this team. We knew, like, generally how they played. They're very heavier on the map. Like, everyone follows each other. So, like, pretty much the entire time, we're just trying to, like, we call it dribble on our team. Like, dribble them out, and then one person keeps pushing. Like, if you look at our last game, that's what was happening. And then... Yeah, I don't know. I was just typing down the entire series, and it seems like they're getting pressed about it. <laughs> seems like it, right? Uh, Core, in terms of that, it seemed like you had great preparation. I mean, in terms of the draft it showed as well. Do you feel generally um, the drafting was difficult and the choices you had to make were straightforward? Or um, I mean, we couldn't show many things versus, um, versus our um, versus TS matchup. Mm -hmm. So we could play many different, um, <laughs> our original comp, and then... Fnatic is not a team like we need to think about a lot of champions, so mm -hmm. draft was easier. I see. Uh, now, historically, Fnatic actually always does very well, specifically into LCS teams. I think you've been a part of that as well. Uh, and LCS team has never been Fnatic in a best of five, if my information is correct. Oh. So, Core, not yeah. Me, not me. Not I you? think it's G9. Yeah. Not me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but why do you think today was the day? Uh... I think we were just better team. <laughs> yeah, we were just better team. Fnatic played really well. They prepared really well, but not enough. Not enough. I feel like you want to be, you want to be like <laughs> a little trash talky, but you're no, keeping it back. You okay. don't have to hold back. Yeah. Cool. Not for my sake. All right, if he's too humble, then. I mean, he is trash. It's not surprising to me. Okay. Uh, well. Uh, I'll go on to your next matchup. Now, of course, the TES series was the one that was tricky. Obviously, I'm sure you learned a lot about it. The good news is you don't have to face them again for now because you're facing the loser of BLG versus T1. Oh, so yeah. how would you feel about those respective matchups? Um, well, I didn't know. I thought we were playing versus T loser of TS or G2. I uh, know, not G2, uh, Genji. Because I wanted to revenge them really hard because I didn't show anything um, what I could do. But I'm I'm confident, yeah. I'm I'm happy to play versus one of anyone right now. No, I, I feel the same way. I think MSI has looked a lot closer than a lot of people have imagined. And I think we're just ramping up. I think our first series was pretty terrible, to be completely <laughs> honest. But I think this series was, like, okay. But I don't think it's still, like, to our peak level of what we can perform. Hey, there's a lower bracket for a reason. You can make that run. Thank you so much. Any last words for the EU fans that are... Probably crying, not me though. I mean, you have G2. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have G2, I think. They are, the they are still EU team. I hope we can meet G2 in, the in this tournament. But until we meet G2, NA is better than you. All right. On those words, uh, we'll cut the interview here. Thank you so much, you both. An incredible victory. Back to you. Thank you so much, Shox. Um, Words of encouragement for G2, I appreciate it, but I also appreciate <laughs> APA not trash talking after the game. He knows that what you're supposed to do before the game, and I mean, yeah, here he's owning it. Not so much about the next game, though. Saving yeah. this for all chats. Uh, he did say he was <laughs> trash, <laughs> so... I mean, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see I, what happens later. Yeah. I think on the other side of the coin, we haven't talked a huge amount about Fnatic. Yeah. I think they will be disappointed with how this uh, MSI has gone for them. They did look okay against Gen.G. You know, they had some signs of promise. And I think generally the same mistakes that we've seen plague them in the LEC continue to plague them here. It is frustrating to watch as an EU fan them do the same thing over and over again. But on the day, TL were just a much better team. Lots of things to reflect on for sure for Fnatic. We will hear uh, from them at the end of the day. But for now, time to us to toss to break we'll be back in just a few minutes for the second series of the day upper side of the bracket this time ts taking on genji stay tuned <laughs> 